Hello friends, this is Shelly from Koala Knits and Knacks. Um, we are going to make these beautiful socks. It's made out of acrylic yarn. I used Bernat Premium Tweeds in the rainbow tweed color. And uh, it's four weight yarn and you're not going to use much of the ball. You only need to buy one ball. Um, we're going to do a long tail cast on. We're going to do a rib stitch and we're going to do a formed heel. So there's lots to learn in this video and I'm excited that you joined me. Um, don't get frustrated and quit. Just keep going until you get it because it's exciting. Once you get it, you get it. <laughs> Trust me on that. So grab your 22 needle machine and your yarn. You're going to need your little loom pick and your crochet hook and uh, let's get going. I have my yarn in hand and we are going to start. So what you're going to do is you're going to get about a two foot um, two and a half foot tail somewhere in there. So just take a long end because we're going to do a long tail cast on. You're going to do a slip knot. Now this is the end that I just un unraveled. Okay, so this is the two foot end. This is the end that's coming from the ball. You want this the end that's the two foot end to be close to you. Okay, so when you put your loop on. So instead of putting it on this way, so this one is from the ball. You're going to put it this way. So you're going to get your first black needle and you're going to put your loop on that needle with the end that is your tail closest to you. Okay. Then we're going to turn our handle so that we have that next needle. We're going to put both of those yarn ends in our three fingers like that and close them up. Okay. Just to hold them secure. This is coming out of the ball. This is the yarn end. Okay. Closest to me always. You're going to put your index finger in your thumb into that center, you're gonna make a triangle, just like this. Then you're gonna tip your hand over. You've got this yarn coming around your thumb, just like that. You've got this middle one here, and you've got this end one here. Ignore that one down there, okay? And so you're gonna go under that first one, over the second one, over the third one. You're gonna grab that third one and bring it through that loop that's between the first and the second, okay? And then you're going to pull your tail cord, your tail end, to tighten that loop and put it over the needle, okay? Don't tighten it too tight because you wanna be able to, to work your next round. We're gonna turn our handle, just so this next one is there. We're gonna put it, do the same thing, both, both yarn ends in those three fingers. This is the tail closest to me. This is coming out of the ball. I'm gonna put my index finger and my thumb in there, make a triangle, tip it up. I've got one, two, three. I'm gonna go under one, over two, over three, but I'm gonna grab three and bring it between one and two, okay? Then I'm going to just pull on my tail end to tighten that loop, put it on the needle. I'll do one more for you. We're gonna do all the needles like this. It's a long tail cast on because what that does is it gives us, um, it gives us a nice loose top to our sock so it's not tight around our calf, okay? So tip up, grab, pull, put it on your needle. It's actually, once you get the swing of it, it's not hard, okay? But everything is hard for the first time, right? <laughs> so you can back this up, make sure you don't split your yarn. You can back this up if you need to, um, rewind it a bit, and then look at it several times so you can get it. And go ahead and cast on to all of your needles. Let me just do one more here for you, okay? So this one is my tail. This is coming out of the ball. I'm going to put them both between my three fingers, just like that. Then I'm gonna go into the center with my index finger and my thumb, make a triangle, tip it up, go under one, over two, over three, and then pick up that third one and bring it between number one and two. I should have rotated that, but that's okay. And put it on there. Then if you tug on your tail end a little bit, you can tighten it a bit, but again, keep it fairly loose. And go around and do that to all 22 needles and I'll see you back. All right, so I have two more left, and before I do them, I'm going to change my row counter to zero, okay? So I'm ready to begin the stitches for the uh, cuff, okay? So let's get these two done. Put that over. And this one, making careful men or attention to this one, to make sure that it goes underneath that nook, okay? Because we need to have that sink down. So you're gonna put your tail into your machine, you're gonna put that yarn end underneath that red divider and into your feet. Okay, again, make sure that this loop stays up so that that needle can sink it down, okay? 
And then we're going to knit our first row here, helping each stitch down as it goes. Did I just lose this last one after I said that? Nope, I didn't, okay. So I'm gonna help push down all of these over the red teeth just for the first row. And we're going to knit 12 rows for our heel and then we'll begin our rib stitch, okay? So making sure that these all connect. Okay, and they did. Now we can go around a little bit more normally, okay? Making sure that all those loops go down over the red teeth before that needle picks it up and drops it down. Beautiful. 12 rows, my friends, and then I'll see you back. I'm almost on my 12th row. I'm gonna set my row counter to zero. So we're ready for the next section. Okay, so there we go. So we are going to, um, it's going to, to switch on to one as we do, as we do our ribbing, that first row that we go around as we rib counts as row one, okay? And so we're going to take this out of the yarn feeder because it's easier. We're gonna knit that first one, just like that, put the yarn in between the two red teeth and wrap it around your counter two or three times, okay? Just so it stays in place. Then for the second needle, you're going to take your, your pick, you're going to take that loop, off, that loop off, and we're going to pull back 12 rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Being careful as you get to the bottom, because you want to make sure that you hang on to that loop from your cast on. Okay, so that's 11. This is 12, my fingers are holding that. I got a snag in there, of course, because that's the last one. There we go. <laughs> my fingers are holding that loop. I'm going to put my crochet hook down from the top, down into that loop. You don't want to lose that loop because then you'll have to cast on again. Well, you won't, but it's hard to fix. I find it hard. I find it easier to just, um, <laughs> to just start over. Okay, so your hook is down through that loop. You're gonna pick up that first bar, bring it through. Next bar, bring it through. Next bar, bring it through. And we are purling this row all the way up. Making sure you grab those bars in the order that they come. Okay. And this yarn end is holding this, this loop down. As you, as you get up closer, you're pulling on this. You don't want that loop to fall off that, those red teeth. So that is serving a purpose there. Now what you can do to prevent it too is now, because we've got the last one done, we're going to pop each side underneath the red divider so that when you pull up on this, on this loop, it's not pulling up on either of the stitches and compromising them on either side, okay? Put that over the red teeth. Then we're gonna unwind. We are going to go under that divider, back up just a little bit. We're going to knit this row that, finish this one that we just purled, and then knit the next one. And repeat the process. Three times around my little yarn feeder there. Take off this fourth needle. Every second needle we rib. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm hoping I'm still in the camera. Eleven, and pinch that bottom because you don't want to lose it. That's twelve. Hook goes into the loop, picking up that twelfth bar, bringing it through the loop on your hook. Then all the way up, purling your row. Okay. So it's how we purl to create the ribbing. So we're having one row of knit stitch, one row of purl, one row of knit, one row of purl, all the way around, okay? I'll do one more with you. We're going to bring that through. Then before we put it on the needle, needle we're gonna tuck that under both dividers just to hold it in place. Then we can pull up on that loop, okay? Just like that. Untie or unwind, go underneath that divider, back up just a little bit, knit this row that you just purled, and then knit that next one. Repeat the process, okay? So you're gonna do that for every second stitch all the way around, so you'll have 11 knits and 11 purl rows, okay? And uh, if you need to see it again, just, just rewind the video and watch these two that I did, and you'll catch it, no, no worries. So keep going, my friends, and I'll see you when you're done. Just finishing the last one here. Okay, and my counter is telling me I'm on row one, so I'm just finishing row one. And soon it is going to click onto row two. 
let me just finish this here underneath and into the yarn feeder and now we are going to just straighten it however many rows you want for the length of your sock that goes up here up your calf okay so for me i'm i'm going to do 24 rows so i this clicked on two so now i'm starting number two and i'm going to do 24 rows and that will give me mid calf uh, for me if you want to do a shorter one you can do like 15 rows if you want to do a longer one maybe do 30. this part is really um up to you you can do as many or as little as you want okay so i'm going to do 20 24 and then i'll see you back okay all right just finishing up row 24 i'm going to set my row counter to zero before i get there okay Actually, at this point, it, it doesn't matter. We're going to do our heel and, and we'll re be resetting it after. But for this part, um, you're good to just leave it if you forgot, okay? So for, for this part, what we're going to do is we're going to just do some short rows and make our, our heel. So this is the part that we are going to do from here to here, okay? And so this is the first section and then we decrease it and do this section and then we're going to do our foot. So to do that, we work over eight needles on both sides. This first black needle always counts as number one for this side, counts as number one for this side, okay? So we are going to count around to needle eight, but we want to make sure that needle nine is still sunk down, okay? We don't want that to come up at all, which means that needle seven is probably going to sit just on the side of your yarn feeder here. So let me just show you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so this is eight, the one we're going to work with. This one is just at the base there, but not quite poking up yet. And that's what you want. Okay, so this is number eight. I'm going to put one stitch marker in row eight on this side. Okay, just so we always know what the first one was that we worked. Just like that. Okay, and now from there what we do is we make sure that 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 um yarn is not over the red teeth and when we put it in this position so so that that ninth needle is still down there then it automatically kind of comes up underneath that um, nook of the needle but if it's over the red teeth you want to take it off and make sure it's not okay so then what we, we're going to do is you're going to take another stitch marker just because it's easier that way this is number eight, this is seven, this is six. You're gonna go in between six and seven and you're going to take that yarn and you're gonna just pull it out. Then you're gonna bring it back and bring it underneath needle seven. Okay, just like that. You're gonna give this a twist just so there's a loop and then you're gonna put that loop under the nook of that needle. Oops, under the nook of that needle eight. Okay, then you can take this out. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to, you're gonna to have to mark that you did needle eight because tell I tell you, you'll get a little confused. So get a piece of paper and a pen and mark one to eight on one side. I'll show you just one. Side. All right, so this is number one needle, that first black one. We just worked eight, so I'm gonna cross off eight there. Now we're gonna to go to this side and we're gonna work eight on this side, okay? So we're going to let, but when you go back the other way, you're gonna have two strands under needle seven, two under needle six, and two under needle five. That's just how it works, okay? And then you're going to keep going till you get to that first black needle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You do not want, this is eight, you do not want nine coming up. So as long as that stays down, if you see it poking up, you know you've gone too far, okay? Then, because when you just get it in this position, this loop will automatically stay up. If you go any farther, it's going to pop down over those red teeth. So now we're going to take the yarn that's between needle seven and needle six. We're going to pull it out, bring it across. Then I pull it on the back there just to make it shorter again. Do one turn so you have a loop in there. Put it underneath needle eight. And then you can put a stitch marker in row eight too, just so you can keep it eye on where that where you started okay and then at this point I would cross off eight on your sheet on this side so you don't get mixed up because trust me you will get mixed up if you if you don't keep track of it um I have several times actually and so eight now I'm going to go back the other way and we're going to work number seven okay so we're going to slowly go back 
This one wants to get stuck under that little thing, so I'm gonna help it a little bit, okay? And you're putting a little bit of tension on because you don't want a hole in your sock, okay? So one, we're gonna go till number seven is ready to be worked and number eight does not pop up. So one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? There's seven right there. That yarn loop is up. It's pretty tight, but it's up. And we're going to take a stitch marker, just the easiest thing to grab it with. Pull that out between six and five, then bring it back so that this yarn is under there. Then I can pull that a little bit tighter in the back. Give it a counter or a clockwise turn so you have a little bit of loop under there. Put it underneath the nook of your needle. Now we've done seven. I'm going to cross off seven on that side and I'm going to go back just like so till I get I'm going to work seven on this side now so one two three four five six I can see eight starting to pop up so I've gone a little too far so now I'm going to take my stitch marker this is seven I'm working that one I'm going to take between six and five pull it out oops come across Give it a clockwise turn to get a loop on there. Put that loop under the nook of that needle, which is, this one's a little bit low. I'm gonna just raise it just a little bit. There we go, okay. Then you can take that stitch marker out. I'm gonna cross off number seven on that far side, okay. And then we're gonna go back and we're gonna work needle six now. I have to pull it down here. This one is here, it's tight and it's stopping me from turning. So I've got to, there we go. So now we're gonna work needle six. So one, two, three, four, five. Needle six almost pops up or is popping up in needle seven. We don't want to pop up, okay? So that keeps that loop where it needs to be. So then between five and four, we're gonna pull that out, bring it across. Pull it in the back to tighten it just a little bit then take that loop and put it over oops put it over needle six and under the nook of that needle okay take it out cross off six on your paper on the left side go back the other direction and you're going to work needle six on that side okay I'll do that with you and then I'll explain how many times you're going to do this. Oops, see that didn't catch. So I want to make sure that catches. So one, two, three, four, five, six just popped up. So between five and four, I'm going to take my yarn, bring it in front, pull it in the back a little bit, give it a twist so I have a loop, put that loop underneath. Cross off number six on the other side. And then we're going to go back and we're going to do, so we have five needles on each side done. So we're going to do needle five on this side and then five on this side, then four on this side and four on this side. And when you have four done on this side, then um, number four done on this side, then come back and see me. And then you will have done number eight, seven, six, five, and four on each side. Okay. All right. So I have to do four on this side and you can see that this, um, Loop went down over the red teeth because I went a little bit too far. And you see that this one had popped up. So I've just got to back that up just ever so slightly and hope I didn't wreck it. Okay. <laughs> and then I'm going to take my yarn from here, from between two and three, bring it underneath, give it a turn to get a loop on there. Hook it under four. The last one's giving me a hassle. Okay, hook it under four. And then I'm gonna take this back till I get my divider this between my last white and my first black in line with the yarn feeder. Okay, so just like that. Help that down under. So now we've worked needle eight, seven, six, five, and four on this side, eight, seven, six, five, and four on this side. What we have to do is do two complete rounds 
starting with with our starting position here we're gonna go one and two complete rounds now go slowly the first one because it's gonna be a little tight oops you don't want that to happen okay you generally have to go two or three needles over and work that stitch over the um, red teeth. Now, this, the reason why that happened is because this, this yarn split on this needle. And so the needle wouldn't go down. There we go. So I'm pushing this down with my fingers as I go. Making sure you have slack coming out of the ball in the back. <laughs> so many things to remember, right? Okay, that's one. That's the hardest one. And two. Okay. Now we are in our start position again. You can take out those stitch markers. You don't need them there. All right, so now what we're going to do is we went from eight, seven, six, five, four. Now we're going to go four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're going to do number four, then four on this side. Five, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight. Exactly the same way that we did the previous row um, when it comes to grabbing the yarn and uh, turning it and adding it to your needle, except for we're going backwards this time. So we're going to start with needle four on this side. So I'm going to go one, two, three. Okay, so that just popped up. This one's not popped up yet, and I don't want it to. So I'm going to go in between two and three. Take my yarn, pull it across, then I'm going to pull it in the back just to, to tighten it a little bit. Then I'm going to um, give that a turn so I get a loop on it, put that underneath, just like that, unhook that, and you can put this in, in row four if that helps you see where that uh, is, okay? Row four, that's where the beginning is. That'll help you to remember that you're going this direction because this is the start, okay? Then you're going to go to the other side. This is counting one. Make sure that pops down over those red teeth. Two, three, this is four. This one is starting to come up, so I don't wanna go farther than that. So I'm going to go between two and three, take that yarn out, bring it across, give it a turn, put that loop on the needle. This seems so confusing to you, I'm sure, if it's your first time. And, and it is a bit confusing the first time, but seriously, when you've done it a couple times, you'll realize, um, that, that you got it. <laughs> okay. And, uh, then it becomes, comes a lot easier. I promise. Okay. So persevere, don't give up. So that's four needle four. Then I'm going to go ahead, mark that off on my sheet. So mark four off on both sides. Now we're going to do five. Okay. So I'm going to knit across till I get one, two. Uh oh, no worries. I just got to Bring this loop down over. <laughs> Watch your loops, okay? So one, two, three. This is four. I'm doing five. So I six cannot come up. As soon as you see it starting to peak up, you know that's when you got to stop. Okay? So I'm going to take the yarn that's between three and four. Pull it out and go across. Pull it in the back so it's a little shorter. Make a little loop. Put that over needle five, just like that. Mark off five on my sheet. Trust me, friends, do it. Cause <laughs> and then you're gonna keep going. You might get called away for something or a phone might ring or you might do like I'm talking to you and then I forget what I'm doing, okay? And so now I've got to go ahead and do five on this side, okay? So one, two, Come on, have some patience because it's required for this project. One, two, three, which one am I doing? So you have to look at my chart. Four, I'm doing this one, okay? So just like that. I'm doing five, so between three and four, I'm gonna take that yarn, pull it out, bring it across. I'm gonna give it a turn. Pull it on the back there just to tighten it up a bit. Get it under the nook of that needle. 
then mark off five on my sheet. <laughs> going back, and I'm going to do six on the other side, number six. And you're going to do this until you get four, five, six, seven, eight on each side done, okay? So if you need to, to figure this out again, back it up and, and watch it. But again, I'm going to go do, looking at my chart, I've got to do needle six. So one, come on, turn for me, baby. I'm, I'm just scared that it's, it's going to catch and that I don't want to wreck my handle. So um, I'm just going slow. One, two, help this one down. Because it's a bit tight, but that's good because you don't want holes. Rather, help it down and have it a little bit snugger than um, the other way around. So I'm doing needle six. One, two, three, four, five. And go a little, there we go. I can see this wiggling to come up, so I've gone far enough. Now I'm going to go between five and four. Pull out that yarn, bring it across, pull it tighter in the back. Give this a little turn, put that over top, take out the stitch marker, mark off number six on my sheet. I'm going to go to six on this other side, then I'm going to do seven, seven, eight, eight, and when you're done that, I'll see you back. All right, so when you have eight hooked on your right side, you're going to take this back to the middle, to the starting point, okay? Just like we did before. Okay, now you can take out those stitch markers. You've successfully done the heel. Congratulations. And again, if you struggled, don't give up. Just do it a few more times, and I promise you, you will get it. Um, and you'll be so proud of yourself. <laughs> when I finally got it, I'm going, yay, I got it. Okay, now I'll show you the one sock. This side is perfect because it's nice and tight. This side, not so much. There's some loose stitches in there. And you know why that is? It's because the, the yarn... Um, loop wasn't under the nook of the needle before I caught, before I twisted it and put it on. It was over those red teeth and so that it made a bit of a hole. That's what I think is the reason. Okay, so I, I missed it on that um, regard. So now we're going to change our row counter to zero again. And we are going to begin knitting our foot. Okay, I have a size six foot and so I decided to do 29 rows um, and I'm going to do 29 rows for this particular sock because it's the, the match to my other one um, but I well from this point on do about 31 maybe 32 rows for my size six foot okay um, because you have to leave room for when you cinch it at the, at the toe so let that just be a bit of a guide so for size six do maybe 31 rows and then you know, I am not a genius at, at um, foot sizes and how many rows for, for every foot size. So um, I know I'm going to get questions in the comment. How many rows do I do for size seven, size eight? So I, I haven't made a pair of socks for every um, foot size. Um, but I would encourage you to make a swatch on, a on this 22 needle. Make just a small swatch of um, maybe 30, uh, 40 needles, 45 needles. Okay, then step on it. <laughs> <laughs> put your foot right on it and then from the heel measure to the toe and see how many rows that is and um, however many rows you count there maybe add two more for the cinching and that's how you can figure out your size that's if you have any other way of doing it <laughs> then then you can let let the rest of us know but that's um, how I would do it okay so I'm going to continue around making sure that each needle catches and I dropped a row there I'm going to fix that when I get it get to that side and I'm going to do 29 rows. I know why I dropped that because on my last um, needle that I worked, I went too far. Can you believe it? You get all the eight needles done and then you go too far in the last one. But that's okay. I'm going to stay with you and I'm going to catch this, okay? Once we get there. So I'm going to remove this from here just so that it's easier. Sink that, put that over there and then I'm going to pick up this row, okay? So I got to get in there somehow. There we go. There's the loop right there. I could unravel it a little further if I needed to, to find that loop, but I could see it. So I'm going to just fix that drop stitch by putting my, the, the bar is over the hook. Then I've got actually what I've got to do here first. Sorry, I've got to take it off of this. I'm going to hold that loop. I've got to take it off this needle because we have to work this one too. I thought I did already. So we're going to go under that bar, pick up the loop. Then we're going to take that loop and go behind the bar. Now the bar's in front. Then we're going to take that bar 
and go through the loop. That's one, and then two, okay? Then put those back underneath that divider, back on that, those two needles, and work that, okay? And keep going on my merry way. Easy, 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 easy. So don't stress. Just, uh, there's always a way to fix it. In most cases. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to continue around till I have 29 rows on my counter, and then I'll see you back. If you do not uh, have a hole in your table for your work to drop down, just put your hand in there, pick it up, and drop it into your machine like that so that your tension remains tight around um, your project here, okay? And then keep going. Oh, got a little knot in my yarn end. That's why I like to hold it with my fingers, even if I'm not putting any tension on it, because then you catch these little things. Okay, so keep going till you get 29 rows or however many rows are for you, and then I'll see you back. All right, so we are at the end of row 29 for me, and I'm going to cut off a long tail so we can do a cast off. Put it behind that first or that last white needle because we still have to knit. This one still has to finish, and we have to make sure that that last white one knits. Okay, and then we're going to put our yarn end on our needle, and then we're going to turn our handle and just take the stitches off. Okay, if this was your first sock with a heel and you followed it through to the end, I am very proud of you because I know it wasn't easy. Why do I know that? Because I have I have done several of these now and it was hard. And there were many techniques in this that you had to learn. You had to do the long tail cast on, you had to do the ribbing, and you had to do the heel, and you did it all. <laughs> so way to go, friends. I'm proud of you, and I would love to see them. Make sure you show us whether they turned out good or, or you you know you have some improvements to make. Show us anyways, and we will um, in my Facebook group call it and that so that we can um, we can follow your progress and and maybe it'll encourage somebody else. Okay, so there we go. Remove your machine. Oops, what happened there? A snag. See, it happens to all of us. Just snagged it. That's all. Yeah, and it's on the heel too, so, oh, that's okay. When I pull it, it'll pull through. And I'll use my crochet hook. But there you go. You've got your sock with a heel. We're going to finish the toe, and I'll see you right back in a second, okay? Okay, so there's our little chart. So I was ticking off this way. Here, here, seven, seven, six, six, five, five. And then on the second time around, we went four, four, five, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight. And if I didn't mark these off, I would have made a mistake. And there's no doubt. Because um, there's always interruptions that you don't expect. And then you, you lose your count. And even if there isn't any in interruptions, it's still so very easy to lose your count. So there's our ribbed cuff. Here's our ankle. Or pardon me, our, our leg. Here's our heel. Oh, I'm so proud of that. And then we are going to now finish our toe. But before we do that, okay, who can tell me what I almost forgot to do? I can hear you all yelling at me, stretch your work. Okay, so we have to do that every time, lengthwise and widthwise. Or that's lengthwise and I did widthwise first, but you see that automatically softened this sock, okay? So then what we're going to do is we're going to turn it inside out, making sure that you take that yarn, <laughs> you take this with you, <laughs> okay? And you pull it through. And then we are going to sew up the toe. Okay, I'm going to cut that off because it's too long. Don't need it there. So proud I got this finished this morning because I have a friend coming over for lunch. And uh, she was a little late, <laughs> which is good. Um, not really late. She worked late last night. So I told her, come whenever she can get here. But I, ex I thought she'd be here a little bit earlier. Um, but it worked out perfectly because... Now I'm going to get this done and she should be knocking on my door in about 10 minutes. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go around and reinforce this twice on that very top row of stitches. Okay. We reinforce it twice just like that. A little bit more. And you don't want a big knot at your toe, so you're going to pull that tight. And here's what I do, okay? I don't knot it. 
I just go around twice the other direction. You tell me that that's going to come undone. It's not going to come undone, okay? Um, it would have to slip around in two directions in a full circle twice. Not going to happen. <laughs> so I do not want, I don't want a hole there. I mean, a, a knot there at my toes. I have very tender um, feet, to be honest with you. When I buy socks from the store, I have sometimes if there's a seam, I can't wear them. I just can't do it. Okay, so this is tight. I can feel it. Okay, so we've gone around both directions. Now I'm going to just take it back a quarter of a, a, a round in the third direction, going back the other way one more time, just like that. Okay, then I know it's completely secure. I'm going to cut this off. I'm going to, I had to add yarn, I ran out, so that's kind of too bad when you're, make sure you have enough yarn because you don't, you don't really have many places you can hide this. I will weave it in underneath all of these stitches. I won't do it on, on camera with you, but I will weave it in, get it out of the way, turn it back the other side. And we have a beautiful, beautiful sock. You stick with me, my friends, because we are going to be making a Christmas stocking on our bigger Addy. That's all I'm going to tell you. Um, maybe if you see this in a year from now, this is 2023. <laughs> um, maybe you see this in a year from now or two years from now, um, you'll be able to find it on my channel right away. <laughs> but we are going to make a Christmas stocking and I can't wait to do that with you. But I had to master this one first. Okay, so there we have our sock. I'm so proud of it. Except for we have one more thing to do. And that is fix the top where we did our ribbing where we look how stretchy that is that will fit any leg okay and we are going to either leave it like that or you're going to tighten it to a little bit tighter for how you want it i like it loose like that so i'll i'll show you how we tighten it just a little bit if that is what your interest is and then we we are done all right so let's uh let's let's tackle this all right i say tackle it because it's kind of sometimes hard to find well, when I look at this one, it, I think it might be easy because you see those little loops that are there? That's our cast on row. That's what we're going to be pulling on. This is the start and it went around like this and this is the end. You want to find the end, okay? So turn it so that your heel is to the right. Move it up. Have your tail here. And you know if you pull on it, it's going this way, okay? So if I pull on that, that's going that way. So this is the end. So if I kind of roll that up a little bit to get that, Last loop, I'm gonna just pull it up with my needle. And then I'm gonna take that next one and pull it up. And every time I go down, I'm getting more and more and more. But the thing is with me, I don't wanna tighten this too much because I like how it is. And the more you pull, the longer you'll get all the way around and then you pull on this and it tightens it, okay? But I, I'm gonna just go very, very lightly. And again, when you push this up, you see all these little loops that are little rows that are going like that and like that and like that and like that. That's your cast on row. Just stick a little needle under there and pull up. Might have to help this one snagged. So of course that's going to give me a little, little trouble, but you know, there's always got to be one in the crowd, right? And then we're going to pull up there and keep going around. I think I missed one, tightened it too tight. It's a little tricky. Okay. Where's this one coming from? Oh, I missed another one. See, because I had pulled it tight and then I tried to loosen it. So I'm no pro at this part, as you can see. But there you go. You find the loop and you pull it up. Okay, maybe I am a pro. <laughs> no, I'm definitely not. Um, but in all honesty, some of these little flecks are getting caught, so that's why it's a little bit hard to. But, but anyways, you're going to go around, and you're going to do that with the top row, your cast on row. And as long as you don't have any tuck stitches or any wonky ones from when you cast on, this should be getting longer as you go, and mine isn't because I lost my slack over here. So I'm going to go back down to here, and I'm going to do this over again. Because I know... It should be a little bit tighter. So I'm going to go in there, grab that one, then that one, because I missed a couple here. And so then it, and that one, see, you just figure it out. And that one, now I'm getting a loop. And that one. 
But now I'm showing you how and I'm going to have it way too tight. So if when you get to this part where you can't figure out where it's coming from, just follow it back and see where it is, okay? And then pull on it. Okay, and that's tightening up. I've already got a big loop like that, just, that, just that's come from here to there, okay? But I'm almost, well, it's actually, I'm almost all the way around. I didn't realize that, okay? So I'm going to finish that. If I can figure out where this came from right here. It's the bigger loops. I was grabbing some of the smaller loops. And since see then, you pull on that. And even though you've snugged it up to, to look a little bit nicer, it still has lots, lots of give in it, okay? So you can make that as tight or as loose as you want it, knowing that you're still going to have some give because you did that kind of a stitch, okay? So then I'm going to take this tail that grew by leaps and bounds. And I am going to... Just loop it into that one loop that's right be, that's um, behind it. So it was coming out of this loop here, so I just went to the loop that's behind it, and I'm going to tie it off in a knot, just like that. And then I'm going to feed this down and hide it in through my my ribbing. You can hide it in through the through the top cuff part too if you want, but I don't want to have any tightness in there. I want it to stay loose, so I'm going to do it through the rib. Just like that. Okay, can't even see that. I'm gonna cut that off. Because if I would have done it through the cuff here, it's straight and it would have had no give. So then what it, wherever you well, you put it through, that would have um, made it tighter. So try to get it into the rib there. You can't even see it. So there you go. Oh, I'm so pleased with this. I'm going to do my other one. Um, but that's what it looks like, folks. Let me raise my camera. Okay, so there you have it. If you have completed this project, you have done a long tail cast on, you have done ribbing, you have done straight knitting, and you have done short rows of increase and decrease here to make your heel. Um, and you have just done a fantastic job. I gotta tell you, I'm proud of this because before I could make a video on this, I had to, oh, I had quite a few failures. I'm going to just be honest. It was a learning curve for me too. Some This part was, was a learning curve for me. Um, but I used to loom knit a lot and it's pretty much the same as the, um, the loom knit sock that I do. It's the same kind of technique. So I, I knew that I could figure it out with no problem. Um, but that is... That is our sock. I'm going to put it on and you will have seen it at the beginning of the video. But my friends, thank you so much for joining me in this tutorial once again. Um, thank you for trusting me to bring you good patterns and for making them and for showing them in my Facebook group, Koala Knits and Knacks, for showing them in other groups so that the pattern can get out there. And just for, uh, for being my crafting channel friends. I appreciate you all so, so very much. Please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't done so. Take care, my friends, and we'll see you in the next video.